During their visit to the partially destroyed school, Asa and Yoru see the remains of Asa's uniform sword. Asa asks Yoru if she knows the woman who revived Yuko, but Yoru says no and passes it off as the girl being a mad woman. Then they encounter the girl with the members of the student council Devil Hunter Club. Haruka Asumi, the club's president, introduces himself to Asa. He tells her she is accepted into the club. Yoru takes over and asks Haruka if he knows Chainsaw Man's identity. Seeing Haruka's pull cord sticking out of his chest, Yoru believes he is Chainsaw Chainsaw Man and walks away. While Asa is skeptical, Yoru believes the star on Haruka's chest is enough proof, although she acknowledges she is too weak to fight Chainsaw Man. Yoru asks Asa to create a weapon stronger than her uniform sword. Sighing, Asa obeys Yoru's request, saying she is now willing to make a human into a weapon if it means Yoru will leave her body so Yoru won't ruin other people's lives. The idea of turning a criminal into a weapon is suggested by Asa, but Yoru says it would not be powerful since Asa wouldn't feel guilty about using a criminal. According to to the war devil. The most powerful weapon is the line between eliminating a cat and eliminating a criminal. Asa spots Denji, who is picking used cigarette butts off the ground. She thinks that she misjudged Denji in their earlier interaction when she spies on him passing off the used cigarettes as new and selling them to homeless people. Asa realizes that Denji is somewhere between a criminal and a cat. Not so bad that he deserves to die, but bad enough for him to be turned into a weapon. To defeat Chainsaw Man, Yoru convinces Asa that eliminating Denji is a necessary evil. Asa confronts Denji but he is aggressive towards her because of how she treated him before, until she asks Denji out on a date and he reluctantly agrees. The next day, Asa assures Yoru that she will be able to seduce Denji on their date, as boys will fall for anyone who can show them a fraction of a good time. Denji will be head over heels for her in no time, according to Asa. During the date, Asa sticks to a plan, endlessly lecturing Denji about anemones. Denji wants to go see penguins, as he has never seen them before, but she rejects the idea, believing this is the plan for a perfect date. The second time Denji interrupts, she is confused, thinking he should have fallen for her by now. Asa tells Denji to shut up and stick to the plan. Then, he tells her that he decided to start thinking for himself, and he ditches her to go find penguins. Asa believes Denji is in the wrong. Yoru thinks she's boring, but Asa calls her and Denji the boring ones, as she studied ocean facts at the library for the date. Suddenly, the girl who healed Yuko appears, telling Asa that as long as she is trying to do the right thing, she cannot turn a human into a weapon. The Falling Devil reveals herself as Fami, the War Devil's older sister. She disappears with Yoru and says that a starving human should be able to abandon their morality and that Asa will not be allowed to leave the aquarium until she turns Denji into a weapon. Denji returns and reveals that the Eternity Devil has returned from hell, trapping them in an endless aquarium. Asa gets frustrated after walking for some time, while Denji confirms once again that this is the doing of the Eternity Devil. However, Asa does not believe him. Then, they run into members of the Devil Hunter Club. Haruka, Segi, and an unnamed member, someone from Kobeni's family patrolling the aquarium for devils. Kobeni's relative panics, having not seen a devil in person before. Yoshida appears, claiming he also happened to be there at the same time as them. Asa questions whether she should turn Denji into a weapon or eliminate Haruka, who she believes is Chainsaw Man. After failing to find the Eternity Devil, the group stumbles into a room and discovers they can obtain water from repeating rooms as well as fish to eat by exploiting the endless confines of the aquarium. The group is bewildered when Asa says she can't eat fish, not because she's allergic, but because it grosses her out as she awkwardly leaves. Asa sighs and notices Denji. She argues with him after she catches him stealing money, telling each other to go to hell. Denji storms off while Asa thinks about how she can contribute to the group. She realizes she still has her mother's phone and tries to get a cellular signal, but breaks the phone after she trips and falls. Haruka shames her. Feeling abandoned and defeated, Asa sits down. It has been roughly three days since the Eternity Devil started its attack. The fish have all rotted and the toilets are unusable. Haruka tells Asa that if she hadn't broken her mother's cell phone when she tripped, the others would have been able to escape the aquarium. As she feels insulted, she reminds Haruka that he claimed to be Chainsaw Man and should do something to help. Haruka asks what she's talking about and she reminds him about the starter on his chest. Haruka reveals the implant on his chest is actually a surgical implant and he got it because he is a huge fan. Asa in disbelief, asks him to confirm that he isn't the actual Chainsaw Man, to which Haruka breaks down, laughing, begging Chainsaw Man to save him, much to Asa's horror. In response to Haruka's hysteria, Yoshida suggests to Denji that he should do something to fix the situation. Denji tells Yoshida that the only reason he defeated the Eternity Devil in his first fight with it was because it revealed itself to him. However, since the Devil is nowhere to be found, he cannot do anything. Denji then asks Yoshida if he can do something, to which Yoshida pulls out a cell phone. Despite this, Yoshida tells him that 
just one signal isn't enough to call for help and that the eternity devil's power has effectively stopped time outside making any attempt to call pointless furthermore he tells denji he is fine with dying before asking him if chainsaw man can eat the death devil to which denji does not respond denji then leaves to find asa asking if she's okay as soon as he notices her sulking after she replies that she is hungry denji suggests she eat the fish but still refuses to do so asa then apologizes to denji for asking him out on a date and getting him mixed up in their current situation as she opens up she says that she had tried to turn him into a weapon but found that she wasn't able to do so because she isn't so sure if what she is doing is morally right she believes her obsession with messing up makes her a bore to everyone around her and she's at a loss as to why as denji sits across from her he offers her an edible starfish asking if she has ever eaten one denji points out how this is the only option since she can't eat fish to which she concedes however she claims raw starfish must be boiled as they are toxic he takes her back to the common room and shows her a pot and lighter he found as they now have a heat source when they sit down to eat asa notices that there are a lot of school hats lying around to which denji reveals he planned on selling them when asa asks why he seems obsessed with money denji reveals he's saving money for college tuition for a sort of friend sort of little sister living with him he explains he never had a normal life and wanted her to grow up having one the two then eat the starfish asa is repulsed by the taste causing denji to burst out laughing saying that even though she bores the hell out of him she is still fun to be around inspired she asked him to confirm what he said to which denji remarks that her newfound bravado reminds him of an old friend looking at the hats asa figures out a way out of the aquarium by getting as much money as they can find the two run through the hall managing to earn a total of a million yen after asa asks denji to hand over the item he initially refuses but when she offers him anything in exchange he concedes she tells him to cover his eyes and ears while remembering what yoru said about how her powers work and what counts as owning something asa closes her eyes and uses the million yen to buy the aquarium so she can turn it into a spear as denji waits for asa to finish her plan he realizes he is mindlessly obeying someone else just because she said she would grant any request before he could think further he noticed a penguin right before him as he picks it up the effect of asa's deal takes place with the whole building turning into a spear whilst leaving the devil who trapped them exposed out in the open the eternity devil mocks asa for even thinking that one million yen is remotely near enough to purchase an aquarium before cursing at Bami, saying that asa's actions weren't part of the deal they made before the eternity devil can strike asa its arm is caught by a tentacle with yoshida mockingly remarking that the devil helped them appreciate life more yoru takes over asa's body and flings the spear into the devil's chest impaling him in a single strike and exploding releasing all the aquatic wildlife that was kept there the other devil hunter club members are stunned with haruka theorizing aloud as to who asa truly is all the while denji is too distracted playing with the penguin to notice asa's actions as fami watches the scene unfold from a nearby rooftop she remarks that something else must be tried seeing her yoshida locks eyes with the famine devil the devil hunter club members are shown talking to several devil hunters about the incident while a surviving aquarium staff member takes denji's penguin much to his disappointment he walks asa's home with mitaka remarking how badly the date had gone denji says that he managed to touch a penguin so there was at least a silver lining to it reminding her that she promised she'd fulfill any request he ends up asking her out on another date saying that since he's more experienced he could teach her how to enjoy herself more asa agrees with denji flashing a peace sign in response according to yoru since they are connected by their brains they are experiencing identical emotions love much to her irritation and asa's embarrassment in spite of this yoru decides to continue with the plan taking over her body before attempting to turn denji into a spinal cord sword the attempt at turning denji into a weapon turned out to be a complete failure with denji being confused by yoru calling out denji's spinal cord sword after several attempts to transform denji she is bewildered when the boy grabs her head and shouts asa spinal cord sword thinking it's just a fun way to say goodbye asa berates yoru for trying to transform him into a weapon and yoru says that it should have worked since they hit it off so well asa theorizes that perhaps it didn't work because transforming the other person requires them to share the same feelings this leads her to conclude that denji probably doesn't feel the same way regardless yoru remarks that due to how little sleep they got in the aquarium she is going to bed asa asks about fami to which yoru responds that it's the famine devil and it's been too long since they last met that she can't remember her advising asa to avoid her at all costs but before asa could ask why yoru passes out asa thinks about denji growing irritated at him for seemingly not reciprocating her feelings despite all they did the next day denji suggests he and asa attend the local movie theater for their second date yet asa still annoyed at him remarks that this idea is way too expensive for her and that video rentals would be cheaper denji asks if she has a vcr at her place which she says she doesn't then she asks 
asks him if he does, to which he replies yes, and Asa remarks that the date should be at his place. Denji is shocked that she wants to come over, but Asa says that they can call off the date if he does not want her to come. He eventually gives in, agreeing to let her stay at the house, as long as she follows the house rules which she cannot break. Asa asks what would happen if she did, and Denji replies that she would die in the worst case scenario. Later, arriving at their apartment, Denji explains that the first unbreakable rule is to not touch any front door aside from his own. Asa asks why would she do something like that, to which Denji agrees and leads her inside. When Asa sits down to watch the movies with him, Denji explains rule 2, not to open the fridge, to which Asa replies that she wasn't even planning to do so. Finally, he explains the third rule. His roommate is currently out walking their dogs, and she tends to overreact, so no matter what, they should never make out in front of her. Embarrassed and offended, Asa shouts that she has no plans to make out with them, shooting Denji down when he tries saying that one thing could lead to another. After Denji points out that she asked him out, she says she hates him, much to his surprise. Calming down, Asa explains that he should just stay away from her, since she has to follow her own deadly rules, or else he end up dead. As she turns back to the film, she tells him she'll leave after it ends. After watching the movie for a while, Denji begins to question whether Asa was just using him or if he messed up somewhere during their date. Then he wonders if it's because of his body odor, which he compares to the smell of a wet dog. Though he wonders whether dogs actually smell bad. Upon turning to Asa, he discovers Yoru staring back at him. She kisses him, much to Denji's shock, and places her hand on his head, similar to when she tried to turn him into a weapon before. But before anything else can proceed, the door opens, and seven dogs start running into the room. In the doorway, a young Naita stands with similar looking hair and clothing as Makima. Pointing at Yoru, she calls her a thief as a chain shoots out of her finger to pierce Yoru's forehead. Immediately as she's attacked, Yoru begins to bark madly like a dog, much to Naita's amusement. Enraged, Denji asks Naita why she did this, to which she replies that Yoru spat on her property. Having reminded Naita that he only belongs to himself, Denji demands that she return Asa to her normal personality as soon as she is fed. After finishing her meal, Naita asks Denji if it would be a good idea to turn Yoru back to her true self, as every woman he's met has only used him for their own selfish gain. When Denji insists he thinks Asa's different, Naita relaxes, noting that Denji can't get seriously hurt anyway. She agrees to turn Asa back to normal, but she has two conditions. First, she can have ice cream every day of the week, and second, Denji must stop trying to romance Asa. Denji is confused by the second one and asks why, to which Naita remarks how awful her scent is. Naita then remarks that she'll alter Asa's memories to believe Denji stood her up for the date. As Denji retaliates, Naita argues that even if they were to see each other, he shouldn't care how she felt about him. In order to protect Asa, Denji agrees to Naita's conditions. Afterwards, Asa stands by herself at the school's entrance. Yoru says it's late and thinks they were probably stood up, so the two of them should target a different boy. Asa begins rambling out loud while also trying to sound indifferent about being stood up. She comments on how she should be focused on returning her body to normal until Yoshida appears and asks if she is okay. After she responds that she is not really doing anything, he asks her if she would be able to keep him company. Later in the day, Yoshida takes Asa to the Devil Hunters Club council room for some coffee. Asa wonders why he's spending time on her since he must be so busy as a public devil hunter, assuming it's because he loves her. When asked about why she was mumbling at the school gates, she states she was thinking about how it's better to live a life of solitude. Yoshida agrees, saying that nowadays, single people can just as easily succeed as couples. This is seen by Asa as a sign that he likes her, and instead of confessing, he says he wants her to stay away from Denji. When Asa asked him why, he refuses to elaborate before leaving. Back in Denji and Naita's home, Naita picks up on the most putrid scent of a devil she's ever smelled. Trying to motivate Denji into fighting, he refuses, saying even if all the ladies want him, what's the point of fighting if he can't have a relationship with any of them? Naita sees where she went wrong, reasoning that as Chainsaw Man, Denji might be able to attract love from the masses, a better option than just a single girlfriend. Thinking it over, Denji agrees, now eager to fight. Elsewhere, a depressed Asa walks home, feeling dejected for being seemingly turned down a second time. Yoru agrees with her that a life of loneliness might be better than constant heartbreak, but as soon as Asa starts thinking about how she has no redeeming qualities and is arrogant for wanting love, the war devil tries to comfort her, saying that she has been too harsh on herself. Asa then remarks how she's tired of being unable to maintain a healthy relationship, much to Yoru's stunned silence with her even saying that she's better off dead. 
Suddenly, Asa notices the corpse of a middle-aged man on the ground near her. Yoru quickly takes over, demanding Asa stays back as she looks up to see every occupant of the complex outside their doors staring directly down at them. We switch things over to the restaurant Yoshida brought Denji previously with Fami of all people making an extraordinarily large order. Yoshida tells Fami to slow down as that is quite an expensive order, especially since he has to pay for it. The Devil Hunter criticizes Fami for choosing an alias with little effort, but Fami replies saying that she doesn't care if her identity is revealed. He then proceeds to tell Fami about the prophecy of Nostradamus, which predicts the extinction of humanity in July 1999. Despite the public's lack of interest, public safety took it seriously and in exchange from their release from custody, 30 convicts made a contract with the future devil. For an unknown price, the convicts received the knowledge of their deaths, revealing that 23 of the 30 will die in July 1999. Yoshida tells Fami that public safety believes she is involved with the prophecy and threatens to treat her as a wild devil if she doesn't cooperate. In response, Fami reveals that the remaining seven convicts will all die this week. Furthermore, she reveals that a primal fear appeared 40 seconds ago at East District's Tomino's apartments and that she will be the first devil to cast the world into the abyss of terror. In an apartment, a couple celebrates one of them getting a promotion. One of them asks if they can buy a car if they get a raise, but both decide owning a car is way too expensive. After a brief moment of silence, they abruptly drop the subject and mutually agree that they should perish. Then, they proceed to walk to the balcony and jump to their deaths. Yoru watches in confusion as countless people drop to their demise before her. She summons a ruler sword and takes a stance as a mangled figure emerges from the pile of corpses. Yoru, misjudging the situation, runs away, claiming she cannot win. After attaching a head to herself, the falling devil notices that she is naked and covers herself with the chef's uniform. Her name is revealed and she announces that she is the chef tonight as requested by Hell's residence. Meanwhile, Yoru is trying to escape while trying to communicate with an unresponsive Asa. The falling devil claps her hands together as we journey through Asa's thoughts, currently going through one of her traumatic memories where the orphanage lady convinces Asa to let go of her cat, Frambone, that she saved at the expense of her mother's life, arguing that one child was allergic to it and Asa should be socializing with the other kids there. Asa hands the cat over, only to later learn that Crambone drowned in the nearby river. When Asa talks to the orphanage lady, the woman responds that it is unfair for Asa to still have a family member while the other orphans have nothing. Deeply unsettled by this memory, Asa wakes up, screaming in terror, releasing control of the body from Yoru. Asa quickly grabs onto a nearby railing as she finds herself to be falling upside down. Due to the falling devil's powers tapping into people's traumas, countless others fly up into the air with some of them going into floating doors which presumably leads to hell for being devoured. In a desperate attempt to regain control, Yoru tells Asa not to be afraid. However, Asa begins to lose her grip on the railing. While falling, Yoru instructs her to shout, Nail Knife. Asa does so, and her fingernail rips itself off and transforms into a knife. The pain makes Asa forget about fear, which lets Yoru regain control. Because the gravity manipulation has no effect on her, she falls back to the ground. Yoru instructs Asa to focus on her pain and speculates about the devil's identity before assuming that it is the falling devil and that Fami is likely to be involved. However, as Asa experiences another traumatic flashback, Yoru slashes her hand, hoping it will keep Asa from being scared. Much to Yoru's surprise, this has the opposite effect and Asa becomes afraid of Yoru instead. Before she loses control, she dashes under a building to not fall into hell when gravity reverses on Asa. In response to Yoru's frustration, Asa argues that she has no reason to trust her since they don't even know each other, how Yoru always says disturbing things, takes over her body whenever, and just cut her hand. Trying to change the subject, Yoru blames Asa's negative feelings on the falling devil's powers. Yoru's lack of care and understanding frustrates Asa, who says that since she can read her mind, she should know what she's afraid of the most, solitude and companionship. Because of her trust issues, Asa is lonely, but she fears that something will always go wrong when she tries to approach people and she will end up alone again. Yoru is left speechless. Meanwhile, several devil hunters have been eliminated by the falling devil. She keeps one alive, however, and proceeds to serve him as a dish called Diru Atlanta to Hell's residence. Suddenly, a massive worm emerges from the door while the devil hunter looks on in horror. While the demon feasts on its prey, the falling devil announces it's almost time for the main dish, which will consist of Asa and Yoru. Chef Mami blitzes through a crowd of people, ripping out their eyeballs and ears. As she collects four ears and ten eyeballs, she considers the next ingredient. She visits a supermarket to shop for apples. She asks the store clerk, who's pinned against the ceiling, which apples would best pair with human flesh. Slurring her words, the clerk apologizes, utterly 
utterly terrified, assuring her that she means no harm. The falling devil leaves the store without paying. Suddenly, she remembers that she forgot about one ingredient, a man's head, so she asks if anyone is willing to lend her one. A group of devil hunter snipers open fire, destroying her body. She instantly regenerates, revealing that she is immune to any and all attack humanity currently possesses. In an effort to avoid meaningless bloodshed, she asks again if anyone is willing to spare her their head. The devil hunters open fire again. Annoyed, she uses her ability to destroy everything around her. Amidst the chaos, she quickly beheads one of the devil hunters and takes their head. With all ingredients complete, she prepares to go after Asa, but Denji arrives, ripping her apart with his chainsaws and a surprise attack from behind. He shouts how she is an apple thief. She quickly regenerates and retaliates, beheading him and slicing him up, but he reassembles and tears her apart once more, much to her surprise. The fight between the falling devil and Denji continues, with the falling devil regenerating and sending Denji flying into a nearby building with a powerful kick. She tries to reason with him, saying that she won't kill any more humans besides Asa, and as such, they should stop fighting. Upon hearing this, Denji becomes even more motivated to fight, telling her to keep her hands off of his ex-potential girlfriend. The falling devil stops his attack midair and orders him to fall, which forces Denji into reliving the trauma of Aki's and Power's deaths. With Denji falling into the sky, the falling devil prepares to pursue Asa once more, but Denji attacks her again, ripping her in half. He reveals that by cutting up his brain, he temporarily becomes incapable of cognitive function, thus protecting himself against mental attacks. He starts imagining the falling devil as a French corn dog and starts eating her. The falling devil lets him partially eat her, then regenerates inside him, ripping him in half. Eventually, Denji runs out of blood and cannot regenerate. Having dealt with Denji, the primal devil pursues Asa. Suddenly, an unknown figure appears next to Denji. By cutting open their palm, they heal Denji. Meanwhile, the falling devil has found Asa, looking terrified. Gripping onto a loose exhaust fan cover, Asa is holding on for dear life, only for a falling devil to grab a hold of her head. She tells Asa that she's more afraid of the pain by falling to her death than dying itself, and she promises Asa a peaceful and painless death if she closes her eyes. As she considers the injustices in her past, such as her former caretaker murdering her cat and Yuko becoming a devil, she accepts the falling devil's offer and lets go. While all this is happening, Yoru screams in panic, helpless to do anything. As she falls, she admits that Falling Devil was telling the truth, and that now she has no need to worry about hurting others or being hurt. However, she reveals her one regret, wishing she had some form of companionship, even if it were with just one person, only for her thoughts to be interrupted by Denji as Chainsaw Man jumping up to rescue her. Asa pleads the Chainsaw Man to let her go, reiterating her nihilistic worldview of how life is full of suffering. Denji initially agrees, but as soon as he notices that the negativity is causing her to race upwards, he tries to overload her thoughts with those of dogs, cats, and ice cream. Soon, the two have stopped floating upward, but Asa, still clearly affected by Crambone's death, asks Chainsaw Man what would he know about grief, to which he replies that he understands the feeling. As soon as things start looking like they're only going well, a catastrophe happens that makes life seem unimportant. Denji continues to speak, stating that some days are just drowned out with negativity. Asa asks him how he's able to overcome such negativity, to which he admits he hasn't yet, but he's able to look past the crap burger because he has a desire worth fighting for. Asa asks what that desire is, to which Denji enthusiastically replies that it's sex. Still in tears, Asa reacts with disgust. She calls Chainsaw Man a creep and tells him to go to hell. Confused, Denji explains that sex isn't gross at all and that humanity has only succeeded because of how great sex feels. Asa retorts that sexual activity is only done when a person has nothing better to do, pointing out how mixing bodily fluids especially grosses her out. Denji disagrees, to which Asa asks why he'd assume he ever get any. Damn. He explains to Asa that he plans to get a girlfriend, but Asa shouts that no one would want to have sex with a man with a chainsaw for a head. This revelation caused Denji enough distress to make him start falling into hell as well. Waking up near the head of another victim, Denji cradles an unconscious Asa before lifting her up and heading towards another door. While escaping, another devil decapitates him, but he reassembles himself and continues running. Arriving at the door, he is blocked by Falling Devil, who demands that Denji release Asa, declaring that he is not a part of the dish. Denji jokes that she should at least save him the ass, to which she calls him a pervert. Suddenly, Falling Devil is impaled from behind by what appears to be a different Chainsaw Man, leaving Denji astonished. 
According to the Pseudo Chainsaw Man, the Falling Devil does not tolerate customers who do not finish their food and as a result, the rest of the devils in hell will strive to devour Asa to satisfy her demands. He then asks Chainsaw Man to evade the other devils until sunrise. After drifting into consciousness, Asa notices two Chainsaw Men before Master Claw tendrils attempt to grab her. Denji and Asa leap out of a doorway, arriving back on Earth. Due to the monster's attack, Chainsaw Man is bleeding from the stomach. Yoru appears besides Asa, requesting she finish him off in exchange for returning her body. The moment she notices Asa begin to hesitate, she becomes frustrated and lashes out at her, annoyed that she does the opposite of what she says. Grabbing a rock, Asa jabs at her palm, causing both of them to scream in pain, before using the blood to revive Denji. While Yoru is irritated that her mortal enemy is being saved, Asa explains that Chainsaw Man has saved her twice, inspiring her to keep living. Another spike tendril peers out of the doorway behind Yoru, causing Asa to scream for Chainsaw Man to save her. Just as the tendril is about to strike them, Denji is revived, picking them up and leaping on the cars and building walls in an attempt to evade the demon. As more tendrils appear from nearby buildings, Denji screams that he is tired and may not be able to save Asa. Asa asks him to steal the motorbike she sees on the highway, but he refuses because a woman is riding it. Soon after, she spots a man riding a bike, which Denji is more than happy to steal, although he blames the theft on her. Yet, Denji realizes he has no idea how to drive a motorcycle and asks Asa for advice as another attack is headed their way. By shouting Super Chainsaw Man Motorcycle, Asa quickly transforms the bike, which dashes forward on its own with amazing speed, slicing the tendril in half. If you want to know how Denji and Asa escape from this situation, you're going to want to click on this video right here.